Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So earlier I made a video showing how to draw a perpendicular bisector. Before you watch this video, make sure to check that out because in this video, we're going to be learning how we can use that to find the center of rotation. Okay, so I have here some positive per questions and we're going to be needing a compass. So make sure you have that. And of course, a pencil and ideally an eraser if things go wrong. So here is a positive per question and uh, let's see what it says. So it says, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. So remember the, the image that the, the shape that you have after the word onto is always the image. Okay, so triangle A is the object. So I'll just put an O over here and triangle B is the image. So that means we have to decide how to go from O to I, meaning what is the transformation that if applied, if applied to A, will take us to triangle B. So this, I mean, obviously this is rotation since that's what we're covering, but if you ever find yourself confused between rotation and reflection, you know, these are the two transformations that students generally uh, tend find difficult to distinguish between. The best way to do is, is to just imagine, or you can physically draw the lines instead of just imagining, just, just connect the object and its corresponding image. So like for example, the image of this point is right here. So you can imagine a line running from here to here, and then you can do the same with any other point. So let's take this point and its image is gonna be right here. And then just imagine another line connecting the two. So are the two lines parallel? You don't necessarily have to draw them to figure that out. You can see that they're not gonna be parallel, which means that this is definitely not a reflection. So what we're left with is rotation. And it definitely cannot be enlargement and it definitely cannot be translation. So we start with that, we say that it's a rotation. So we have now written what the transformation is. Now we need to write down everything that rotation is defined by. So if I, for example, ask you to rotate an object, I say, you know, here's the, here's the object, rotate this. Is that enough information? Of course not. What you need to know is the angle. What you need to know is the direction. And most importantly, what you need to, you need to know is the center. So let's, let's figure out the direction over here. So since it's A onto B, so that means it's 90 degrees anti-clockwise yep so it's rotation 90 degrees anti-clockwise okay so 90 degrees anti-clockwise i hope you can see this clearly now the tricky part is finding the center okay now there is an alternative way to find where you which you can use to find the center of rotation i've made a video on it i'll share it and there is a way that you can that too by the way is you is through drawing a perpendicular bisector but the only difference is that we don't use geometrical instruments to draw a perpendicular bisector we do it with the help of the grid so make sure you learn that method it's always a good idea to have backup plans but in this video like i said we're just going to be focusing on how to draw a perpendicular bisector using a ruler and compass so what you want to do is this pick an object and its corresponding image now what i usually like to do is when i'm teaching this i just label a point on the object P and its image as P prime. Okay, you can do, you know, you can do A and A prime, anything goes, just make sure that you're able to see the object and its corresponding image. Now we're gonna draw a perpendicular bisector of these two points. So what you wanna do is you wanna open your compass to a length which is more than half the distance between the two. Make an arc on this side, just be generous with your arc, okay? and then make an arc on the opposite side. And don't be, you know, don't, don't take this lightly, make sure that you're as accurate as possible because if you're inaccurate, then what will happen is the inaccuracies will just keep on adding up and before you know it, before you get to the final answer, there will be a difference, there will be a significant difference between your answer and the actual answer and it'll be very difficult for you to figure out what the uh, center is. Now you wanna repeat that, but this time keep your compass, the pointed side of the compass at the other point. So make an arc here, make an arc here. Okay, so what do we have? We have a point, two points actually, where the two sets of arcs are intersecting. So what you want to do is you want to join them with the help of a straight line. So this is one point of intersection. This is the other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these two points with the help of a straight line. Remember, be as accurate as possible. Now, once you're done with this, here's what I advise. I advise that you erase the arcs because you really want just the perpendicular bisector, the arcs are unnecessary. So I'm just gonna erase the arcs, why? Because you'll find out, you'll find out shortly why I recommend that you should erase the arcs because if you don't, you'll basically end up confusing yourself. Okay, you'll have a whole bunch of arcs and you will end up confusing yourself as to which arc is of which perpendicular bisector. So I've done that now. 
Let's repeat the exact same process, but this time we're gonna pick a different set of points. So this time what we're gonna do is, let's pick this point. So I'm gonna call this Q and its image. Here it is, Q prime. So now, once again, we're gonna make a perpendicular bisector. So exactly the same process, open your compass, do a width of or length of whatever you wanna call it, more than half the distance between the two, make an arc here, be generous with your arcs, and then make an arc here. Okay, once you've done that, repeat the same process by placing the compass on the other side. All right, now let's join. Now you can probably see why I said that you should erase your previous arcs. Let's join this point with this point. And remember what you're looking for is the point of intersection. You're looking for the point of intersection between the two perpendicular bisectors. And we have just that, it's one comma one. And this, fellas is the center. Okay, so the center is one comma one. So once again, this is a rotation 90 degree anti-clockwise with the center one comma one. Okay, so how do you find out the center of rotation? You pick a point and its corresponding image, you make a perpendicular bisector of the two, then you do the same for another point and its corresponding image, you look for the point of intersection, the point where the two perpendicular bisectors intersect is the center of rotation. Now I know there's a lot of work, but it is what it is. So here's another question. Let's solve this one as well. Triangle A and triangle B are drawn on the grid. Describe fully the single transformation that maps A onto B. So remember A is the object, B is the image. So it's A onto B. So it's definitely a rotation and it's definitely 90 degrees. How do I know it's 90 degrees? How am I, how am I so sure it's 90 degrees? Because this line before rotating it was horizontal. Now it's vertical. So it can only be 90 degrees. And not only that, it's 90 degrees anti-clockwise because you've gone in this direction, which is no, A onto B. It's 90 degree clockwise, yeah. So it's, since it's, it's, it's always, uh, a watch always comes in handy. So A onto B is 90 degree clockwise. Yep, that's correct. So it's a rotation. We start with that. Start by stating the transformation. Then everything, the transformation is defined by 90 degree clockwise. Let's make sure of that. 90 degrees clockwise, okay. Now comes the annoying part. And you know, there, there are no two ways about it. This is annoying, but like I said, it is what it is. And that is to find out the center of rotation. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Exactly the same process. Pick a point and its corresponding image. It's always a good idea to label the two. So I'm gonna call this P and I'm gonna call this P prime. Or technically this is P and this is P prime, but it doesn't matter as long as they're both one is the object and the other is the image. So I'm gonna put my compass here, open it to a length, which is more than half the distance between the two, make an arc here, make an arc here. Draw light arcs, as in don't make them too dark, otherwise you'll find it difficult to erase them. Now let's place the compass at P, make an arc here, make an arc here. Let's join the two. So we have perpendicular bisector number one. Here we go. Okay, now, since you just want the perpendicular bisector, it's a good idea to erase the arcs. And there you go, job done. Now we want another perpendicular bisector. Okay, so which point should I pick? Let's see, I can pick this point. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Q and I can pick this point. I'm gonna call this Q prime. Now, since these two points line up vertically, that means their perpendicular bisector is just gonna be a horizontal line. So what you can do is, you don't really have to use a ruler and compass, although I will use deliberately use a ruler and compass just to you know make sure that you guys get a hold of the concept, but here's what you can do. You know that a line that's supposed to be perpendicular to these two, to the line that we get that's joining these two points is going to be a horizontal line and it's going to pass through the center. So let's see how far apart these two points are. They're one, two, three, four, five, six. That means the perpendicular bisector is going to be three points away or three units away from uh, both sides or from, from both the object and the image. That's one, two, three, and it's going to be horizontal. So that means this is what the perpendicular bisector should be like. Now you don't really need a ruler and compass over here, but just so that you guys get a hold of the concept, I'm going to use a ruler and compass to make a perpendicular bisector. So just make sure that you're paying attention. Now, once again, open your compass to a length, which is more than half. Here 
here we go here it is more than half and then repeat on the other side as well now place the compass on the other side on the other point make an arc and make an arc here now look for the points of intersection of the two arcs so there is one here and there is another one over here now if i join these two arcs what do we get we get a horizontal line just like we anticipated earlier and what are we looking for we're looking for this point of intersection which is one comma minus one and there you have it that is your center of rotation so there you go this is how you can use a ruler and compass now wait this is how you can use a ruler and compass and obviously a pencil to find out the center of rotation through a perpendicular bisector so that's it for this video i hope you guys have understood the concept i will encourage you to practice this this requires a lot of practice and uh, be as accurate as possible from the get-go so that you get the exact answer as well so let me know what your thoughts are on this whole idea of finding the center of rotation and uh, that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one until then take care Allah Hafiz.